Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I'm going to talk XRP and MoneyGram today. And first stop is Singapore. Singapore is a tiny country. It sits right at the tip of Malaysia here. It is an island. It's only 50 square miles in regards to the land area. So compare that to the smallest state in the United States, which is Rhode Island. Rhode Island is twice the size of Singapore. Now it may be small, but let me tell you that in November, the FinTech investments crossed the $1 billion mark. And it's up over 69% in regards to those investments. So there's no, no kind of wonder why Swell was held in Singapore. There is a lot happening, even despite its tiny size on the map. If I just zoom out twice here, you can see its size in comparison to Australia, which is maybe a little bit of an unfair comparison, but it is just a very tiny country, but it's a powerful country. It has 5 million people. And if you're in the world where you don't understand square miles and you want to compare to square kilometers, well, think of it as about the same size as the Vatican City. In a city of Liechtenstein, which I hope to meet a lot of you very soon in, that is three times the size of Singapore. Yeah, so I, I just love that country, but it is, uh, <laughs> It's very, very small. Okay, let's see what's happening here. In the last 24 hours, we learned that MoneyGram, who has been operating in Singapore since May 2010, almost 10 years, launched their very first online presence. So this is part of their push towards digital. And now the new Singapore website for MoneyGram was revealed and it's really quite beautiful. Take a look here. I think the UI is very, very nice. And one of the things that stands out is that they are advertising that you can send money for as little as a 99 cent fee to anywhere in the world. The, of course, the exchange rate for currency and the uh, terms and conditions may apply. But I want to do a little comparison. So I chose to send 500 Singapore dollars to Japan, and you can see that I received 37,251 yen for that. That is just a little under $400. That just gives you the exchange rate. There's one Singapore dollar is 74 uh, Japanese yen. So I was able to select a payment option of debit card, and I can pick that cash up. And the uh, money typically is available for pickup in minutes. Yeah, there's a little tiny, tiny three here, and it does say that the timing could be different based on the country and the banking hours. But I think for the most part, uh, they're talking about pretty much a same day pickup. All right, let's go to the Western Union website, which is, um, well, it's detecting my IP address. So it knows I'm in Japan, so I only can choose to send Japanese yen. I can't do the same Singapore dollars to yen, but let's just reverse it. So we'll take the yen to Singapore dollars. It's a little annoying. I wish it would give me a little bit more flexibility to choose the uh, sending country and the receiving country, but it doesn't. All right, so in order to send that, 500 Singapore dollars on Western Union, it's going to take 41,350 yen. Now remember, it was 37,251 yen to do that transaction uh, with MoneyGram. So we're talking about a difference here of 3,099 yen. That is about 40, well, no, it's about 30 US dollars, but it's more expensive. That's what I guess I'm trying to get to. And the cash pickup, um, well, yes, I did choose cash pickup and I don't have the option to do debit card or credit card. I don't even have the option to do uh, cash, you know, walk up to an agent and give them cash. I can only do a bank transfer. Now we want to really pay attention that even with this difference of being uh, more expensive, we really want to look at these tiny little numbers here. So the one and the three in regards to the one 
business day that it takes to move that money. The one says the differences in time zone and agent hours will delay. So that's okay. It's understandable. But here's interesting. The little 13 mark refers to a small indication that generally money will be deposited into receiver's bank account within three to five business days from the time the money is received in Western Union's bank account. So we're talking three to five plus depending on the hours of the bank that it is going to. It's <laughs> very slow. And the fees, according to this, with this little uh, two and five, the fees are subject to change without notice. And also the online fee is for today. Fees <clears throat> at it, agent locations may differ. Well, I don't think we're doing an agent location in this case, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the business account for those payments are also something that they won't do. So the account has to be in your name. That's probably a KYC issue. That probably is across the board, I would imagine, for a lot of the money transmitters. Okay, but here's the big news today. We are talking about Brinks. I think a lot of Americans know Brinks because they are famous for their armored trucks. And they are, well, now the world's largest cash management company. They have a global network. They're in 100 countries. And they also have an expansion strategy to get into payments. If I go to their services page on their website, you can see that, yes, indeed, they are into payments and they're providing those financial services to the world's underserved. That's what it says right up here on the left hand side. They have integrated this debit MasterCard, which works with money that you can get around the world through ATMs. And also they are into mobile payments. Then they locate those mobile payments in kiosks that are located in bank stores and convenience stores. And they do it under the brand of ePago. Now, this is not a coincidence, but they are in Brazil, Mexico, Peru. Yeah. Coincidence? No. As you know, I don't believe in coincidences. So they are very strong with this payments in Latin America. And just nine hours ago, we have this announcement that was made on the Global Newswire that Brinks is going to invest in MoneyGram. They actually invested with $9 million and they now are the proud owners of 4.95% of the outstanding shares. And in the earnings call that took place today, they said that they have walked away from many deals because they are extremely disciplined. So it's quite interesting that they didn't walk away from this deal. So in this particular earnings call, here's a quick list of some points I learned. Uh, 2019 was very strong for them. They are 12% up in increase per share. They had a 23% increase on earnings and a 7% increase on revenue. That revenue would have even been higher had it not been for the spending that they did on the MoneyGram investment. But they are expanding aggressively now over the next three years and they really understand the impact of fiat currency fluctuations. They have a lot of discussions about that in certain parts of the world, particularly talking about uh, Argentina. So Brinks wants a long-term relationship with the payments uh, initiative that they have done uh, with them. And I think the most interesting for the aspect of how this is going to look for MoneyGram was at the end of the call, there was a Q&A and somebody from Goldman Sachs asked the question, so how does this MoneyGram investment take shape and what are the opportunities? Well, it was 
very clear that they understand that this is a cash ecosystem that they're participating in and money processing with financial institutional customers uh, is a big opportunity and it's very significant because these banks are outsourcing and they will continue to outsource and what Brinks wants is a technology solution fully integrated for their payment system and they want to do a joint development for cash payments now listen to this they want to do and this is quote unquote cash to digital digital to cash that is the xrp workflow i am 100 percent sure about that so they want to sell and provide these uh, almost instant solutions. And the opportunity is they have agents and MoneyGram has agents. So you can see they are going to leverage off of their system and integrate into MoneyGram's system. So the strategy is going to be very effective for the consumer and the details they said will be coming. I think this is a really great change of events for XRP. Okay, everybody. Yeah, I'm moving to the fluff already. We're going to talk about uh, something that's kind of fun, actually, very interesting. Uh, but I wanted to first tell you that if you do come to Japan, one of the things you'll find is how different the movement of money uh, on the street is. There are uh, <laughs> It's just interesting. This is Japanese version of a armored car. It's just a van. <laughs> there, there isn't an armored car. And the money, it just moves uh, in a bag. And the guy just opens the door. And this is actually a funny video because many, many people who uh, come from other parts of the world are pretty, pretty jaw down when they see how the money moves in this country with just two people who I don't even think they're armed. One guy carries a baton, but I can show you also another blog here where they said a high security on Wall Street. This, Wall Street, this is up in Otaru, which is in the um, Sapporo region of Hokkaido. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is what it looks like, uh, walking on the street um, with the money in a bag and one guy's behind and yeah he carries a baton uh, you just see this everywhere on the street throughout the shopping malls everything it's just well it's great i'm not making fun of it because uh it's a safe country so i'm kind of proud to say uh, they don't need an armored van uh, at least not right now maybe that'll change in the future someday but right now they just get into a normal van that's uh yeah kind of you know it's like it's not even a plain wrapper or trying to disguise itself it's like here we are we're the money carriers and they have the logos on the side it's it's just really funny all right this is though what i want to tell you and the company that's like uh brinks in Japan is called Seikom, and they are the leader for security. And they, gosh, created something very interesting. This is the world's first virtual security guard in Japan. And of course, it uses AI. And you'll find that they are in the receptions of office buildings. And they um, even have the ability to do facial recognition. So when they do, it, it will give you uh, a response by a salute to show you, yeah, welcome. Welcome back to your office space. And I'm going to show you respect with this salute. It seems a little less threatening than a robot or a camera. I, I don't know why, but um, I, I, I find it, um, mm, it's just kind of, kind of cute actually and this is what it looks like when you see them in a reception area it's a reflection that appears on a mirror and yes it does come in a skirt too i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> because she's wearing high heels well, i don't know japan sometimes you're stuck in the 50s but anyway that is the female version 
And if it uh, detects something suspicious, it will stop you. And um, I don't know, I've never been stopped, so I don't know what it may say, but it does have the ability to call a real security person uh, immediately if it feels that it's not getting cooperation. And in the case of a child, it actually can adjust. Oh, there we go. It actually, let me just show you there. It actually can adjust by kneeling down and talking on the same level as the child with an eye to eye contact. How interesting, huh? Well, that's Japan. I hope you get a chance to see it and when you come visit. All right, everybody, do take care. Sign off for now. Bye bye.